sins of my youth, nor transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember, remember thy me for thy goodness sake. He said, what? O oh Lord, remember not thy sins of thy youth. This is a very strong contrast. When we were all young, there was something in our life that we wasn't doing was right according to the word of God. The reason it's a strong contrast because the psalmist brings forward the own very convictions of each and every one of us. He talks about the own conducts of life. How we were all messed up. How we were all tore up. How we were somewhere in life that we know we ought not to be. And there was places that we dwell in and we know we ought not to be dwelling in. But God who was rich in mercy and grace in Am I somewhere with somebody this morning? I believe the Holy Spirit is talking to somebody this morning. As I know he's talking to me. The word of God declares and decrees. And we look at uh, over here in uh, chapter 25 of uh, Psalms. He talks over here in verse 8. He say, he say, good and upright is the Lord. He, he calls on the Lord once again. He said, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, therefore will he teach sinners? In the way, you notice what he he's upright and good. You know what? When you look at the break in the parallel scripture, look, God is upright and good. Would he teach a sinner to walk in his way? No, God wants the sinner to come out of what they're in. Even though you may be in sin, even you may be in loss, even though you may be still walking in Ephesians 2, your transgressions and sins. When you walk through the course of the world, as I said in one of my studies, some of us walk through the course of things that we have done. We made a path down that way. We made a trail, like going through a field of bush. We made a trail going through that thing. We ran down it so much. We trampled the very good that was in it that we just wore it out. And when we see like we see good all around us, we just go to that path that we used to be on. That we continue to walk that path. But that's a course of destruction. The word of God declares that the blind leads the blind. Sometimes the path in our old life is a is, is a path to destruction. It's for the enemy to be able to take us out. And make us feel un, uh, unwanted in lives of what we are and what God has created us to be. Let's move over here in verse 9. It says, the meek will guide what he guide in judgment. And the meek will teach his ways. It, isn't that something? It, isn't that something? He say, I will guide the meek ones. And not only when I guide the meek ones, I will teach them my ways. Am, am I somewhere with somebody? Am I talking to somebody when you go down to some of these other translations the world english translation for those who understand some of these web bibles and i mean i got a whole host of stuff that's set to my library but i want you to know that you can pull this stuff also he said he will guide the humble in jest he will teach the humble his ways now now think about that that's in that's verse that's verse 25 and verse 9 look in order for you to hear from god you got to be meek I Meaning you got to humble yourself before what? the mighty hand of God. And when God guides you, then he will lead you into all truth. And the judgments are set before you. He will begin to pull you out of the path of what the enemy has set up for destruction for you. Only when you walk in the meekness, he says, in, in the meekness will he teach. In other words, come to the submittity. Come to the humility of Christ. Then in the midst of where you are, that it would seem like things around you seem to be so turmoiled that God has got a remedy for whatever it is that you're dealing with. He He's a gracious God. He's the God of the proper language to speak to in ways that no one else can. He furthers the very testimony of remembrance and knowing that it's through his mercy and grace that he will give you everything that you, am I somewhere? I believe I'm talking to somebody this morning. God, who is rich in mercy and grace. God alone who pulls us out of the very things that we're in, the very, the very calamities that's in our life. God alone forgives you from sin. It, it's not man that can do anything for you. Yeah, you may be standing in the midst of some bricks and some mortar, and you may feel like you're head of the poor pit, but I'm not speaking about that. Either. I'm talking about God who speaks to the priest, who speaks to the pastor, who speaks to the prophet, who speaks to the apostle, who speaks to the bishop, who speaks to the evangelist. It's only through him that he get his instructions from, not to us from his educational point of view. The Bible declares and decrees over in the book of, of, of Psalms, um, 25 and verse 10 he said in the path here we go he's calls on the Lord once again in the path of the Lord are mercy and truth it, isn't that amazing you, 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 that's the only way you're going to find the truth is in his path that's why he says in Proverbs 3 and 5 that if you lean to what you think is right 
then that path is a path of destruction. The Bible says it's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is his death. You got to lean on the Lord and lean with or not uh, with, lean on the Lord with, 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 with all your heart. And then he would acknowledge your ways. In other words, the word of God declares in verse 9, you got to be meek. And then he will guide you into the judgments. Meek. You got to be meek, humble before God. Not because you feel that you're over a certain group of people. You got commands over them. The people don't belong to you. God just put you there to be a bullhorn to instruct them in the vision that God has to go for. This is why it's so important about the fivefold ministry. That people don't come into your house to love you or love the man of God. They come in, you know, even though the Bible says we got to have love because he does declare and decree. How can you say you hate the one that I created? So we got to have love. But through the judgments and the precepts of what God has given us in the vision that he has implanted into our hearts. To be go out and spread the gospel, to go out and gather the harvest. Our job as the man of God is to train those up in the way that they need to go, that they may live a successful life. And when God calls them to the point of the kingdom, he want to hear, well done, my faithful son. Be faithful. Don't be rebellious. Rebellious is one of the biggest things to keep a lot of us out of the works and out of the blessings of Christ. And we don't seem to understand that. I want to, I want to, before we, 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 we go on down into verse 11, what well, verse, yeah, verse 11, I want to show you about a very hairy rebellion in the book of chapter, in Romans. And we see this in the book of Romans. He says over in the book of Romans, and this is one reason that Israel was rejected from Christ. Because every time we looked around, they rejected God's word. This is why they stumbled so much. Because they looked to the idols, they looked to those telegram poles, those total poles, they looked to rocks, they looked to these goats and sheep, they looked to everything but God. In other words, they didn't believe Christ because they couldn't see Christ. But God, has sent, God always raised up a prophet or a priest in that era to give them what thus say the Lord. But they rebelled because of their traditions and their ways and their man-made religion. He goes over in the book of Psalms, and become of um, Excuse me, not Psalms, ladies and gentlemen, but over in the book of Romans, in chapter 10, Romans 10, he said, Brother, my heart's and desire that the prayers of God is for Israel. Now, just that point right there, you ain't got to fairy tale this thing no farther than that. Brother, my heart and desires. Whose hearts and desires? Paul is calling out to the, to the people of Rome. That Paul said, my heart and the desires that the prayers of God, if it's, if it's for Israel, that they might be what saved, saved what and sanctified and filled with the precious power of the Holy Spirit. Paul begins to speak in the book of Rome in his letter to the Romans. He said, for I bear them record that I have a zeal for God. In other words, that takes you back to Luke 6 and 46. You say you love me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. In other words, Luke 6 and 46 says that why do you call me Lord, Lord, and then you do not the things I say. Paul goes on and relegate this very scripture. And he goes on in, 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 in verse 3, if I may meet, if I, if I may read, if I will, in you know, uh, verse 2 on to 3, he said, if I bear record that they have a zeal. Notice that a zeal for God is kind of like the same thing today, but not according to what the knowledge. They don't know about the Lord. They got a performance. They got a God likeness, as he says over in the book of Timothy. They got a form of godness, but they did not a power. They didn't believe that Christ was able to bring them out of whatever it was the end. They didn't believe the mouth of the prophet when he brought forth the word to them, then they may be delivered out of whatever transgression they were living in. He said, for they have a zeal for God, not according to the knowledge, for they've been ignorant. That's a powerful word. Rebellious of God's righteousness and going about establishing their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That's a very powerful word. This is one of the reasons a lot of us fall into rebellion. The reason a lot of things is going on in our life right now, whether it be relationships, whether it be finances, sin, we get ahead, so we fall right back five steps backwards, ten steps backwards. And we don't understand why we're still falling in this trap because you never really took the chain off. Because when you come to Christ and understand that who you are in Christ, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, he's a new creature. In other words, when you say that word out of your mouth and you believe, according to the book of Romans 10, 8, 9, then God said, I, I, I chopped, I shattered the chain. I don't break it because anything you break can be fixed. God said, I, I shatter the chains. I clip the bonnet. I, 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 I separate the very heads that the enemy is trying to put around you. I loose it in the name of Jesus. And I declare that thou art free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. He goes over in verse 10 uh, for, 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 for time's sake. He say, he say, all the path of the Lord. He calls on the Lord once again. 
all the paths with an S. Whatever error you take, what all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as kept his covenant and his testimonies. You go over the book of Psalms 84 and uh, I believe it's 84 and 30, 84 and 39, I believe. I believe I mean that 89, 89 and 34. Psalms 89 and 34, he talks about when he gets roll over to the book. Let's 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 creep over there. Let's go look at Psalms 89 and 34. Let, let, let's look over it. He says in 89 and 34. Now this is what verse 10 is talking about. He said, My covenants I will not break. Nor will I alter the things that what go out of my mouth. In the word of God saying, according to the word of God, every word that proceeded as mouth goes forth. It will not go back unto you void. He goes on and says over in Psalms 89 and 35, he said, once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto what David. He talks power. He talks volume here, even in your life. Not that's only to David, but only to you. He goes on over in verse 11 of, of Psalms uh, 25 and 11. He said, for the name of. For thy name's sake, here we go again, Lord, I ponder my iniquities, for it is great. Notice how he says that. Look, Lord, he said, Lord, he calls on the Lord every time in these very vital parts of the scripture. For thy name's sake, O Lord, ponder my iniquities. Think about the things that I'm doing. Let, let, let's look into that a little closer than that. And I know we got a few more verses here, but I'm going to be up off you here in a minute. Look what he says over here. How he says, ponder my iniquities. I mean, meditate on the things that I've done that whatever it may be that you come to mind to make me know that I can be forgiven for whatever it is. Don't hold back from me, Father God. If that's something in my life is right now, I want you to show me that whatever I need to get on my knees and ask you forgiveness for, I'm willing to do it. Because I don't want to fall short for what you have in store for me. For your name's sake, O oh Lord, ponder my iniquities, for it is great, great. What are you, what are you saying here, David? Notice what the word of God is declaring here. When we look at the the, uh, the, the definition of for Psalms twenty five eleven, iniquities. Think about that, iniquities, wickedness, sin. Charge me on the inside for whatever it is is not right with you. That whatever is not right with you, I want to get it right with you. I want to get it right for your name's sake. So I want you to search me. I want you to probe me, Lord. I want you to look deeply inside of me for the hidden things. Not when I go in the house of God and I got a smile on my face, but I got a crack in my foundation. I want to go in the house of God and amend my ways, what it says in Jeremiah over there in the book of Jeremiah 7. He said, I want to amend my ways because I want to go in and not smiling on the outside, but smiling on the inside. I don't want to come with a false pretenses before you. I want to come in the house of God and being something or not. So, Lord, ponder my iniquities. The prayers seem to have been offered in the view of remembrance of our transgressions. Talks about the early stages of Psalm 7. When you go back to the book of Psalm 7, it makes you realize and understand when you look at Psalm 7. He said, remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember me thou, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. God, look, Lord, remember me for the good things. I know I was messed up. I know I was tore to up from the floor up, and I need to check up for the neck up, for the neck up. But I'm telling you, so there's a reason why God really want to bring you out of what, because he loves you. He talks about the great transgressions, the great translation, or the great transition that he want to do you and bring you out of the very of evil that you may have a heavenly place sitting on the right hand side of the father with the son who's declared and decreed on the word of God, that even in the midst of your iniquities, even in the midst of your transgressions and sins over in Ephesians 2, God has delivered you from whatever it is that the enemy is trying to make you feel alienated from. An alien is something that you can, you could, you, 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 you actually, when you look at an alien, you have all kinds of things about an alien. In other words, it don't have any kind of a celestial with what mankind is, but it has something that behooves you because you know nothing about it. Am I somewhere? Something foreign. Something you know nothing about. And the first thing you do when you see it, your ears go up, or your senses go in, your hair stand up on the back of your neck. And you have something that's, man, what, 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 the, what is that? What, the, what, what, the, what is that? Like when you see something that look like a bug or something or something strange, that you, you say, whoa, what is that? You, 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 you want to, you got the ability to want to, that's the way God wants you to look at your sins. Is it some foreign object that you've never seen before? And you want to question it. Is it good for my life? Was it bad for my life? 
Of course, if your antennas went up about it, may be too good about you. Don't experiment and mess with it. But some people just got curiosity, inquiring minds. They want to get into the stuff and find out. It's just like seeing. They want to. They, they